problem. There's no help. I mean, it's real. It's like... Our families are suffering. Children out here are suffering. People think about money more than helping people, helping people, helping people. Many would ask, where is God? Good morning, church. Bonjour. Havariza Subuhi. Buenos dias. No matter who you are or where you're from, you are welcome in this place. Amen. Amen. Come on. Show some joy. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. You all look great. Can I just say for a minute, I did miss y'all. I miss y'all. Amen. We are going to go in a time of worship. But if you, it's your first time here in person or online, on behalf of the Reverend, our senior pastor, Dr. Jerry Cannon, and the rest of the leadership of CN Jenkins, you are welcome in this place. And may you feel comfortable, may you feel loved. If you don't have another church, may you see that seat as yours. And if you have another church, go and tell them we say hi. Amen. And now we are going to go in a time of worship and to praise God. Amen. Amen. Now, what I want to ask you, I won't ask for much, right? I promise, Pastor, I'm not going to ask for much. But what I want to ask you is for an in intentional worship. 
right? We don't want you to be spectators. We don't want you to feel like we're performing. We are coming to share our love and gratitude to God. Can you help me do that this morning? Amen. And now, let's hear our men as they lead us into worship this morning. Amen. about you but the depth that is in this word here is my heart here is my heart now we are going in the time of prayer this morning and I want you to be as honest as open as you want to be with God I don't know what kind of week you had Maybe you were on the go all the time. Maybe you had a busy schedule. Maybe you didn't have time to pause, to talk to God. But in the next few minutes, we are going to talk to God. I, I, I know you look nice. You dressed up and you look nice, but I want you to talk to God. There is so much going on in the world. And every time we turn on the news, everything is heavy. But I'm so thankful for the house of God. For I can find rest. I can find peace. I don't know what's going on in your family, but there is peace. I don't know what's going on in your finance, but there is peace in the house of the Lord. Here is my heart. That is going to be our prayer this morning. Here is my heart. Maybe it's broken. Maybe it's sheltered. Maybe it's disappointed. But I feel the Holy Spirit in this place saying, speak to God. Close your eyes. Talk to God in your heart. Oh God, I thank you. I must first come with 
thanksgiving. Before I can ask, I must be grateful, oh God. Thank, thank you for life. Thank you for food. Thank you that I still have my sanity in this world. Thank you that every day you give me strength to push through. Thank you, oh God, for salvation. Thank you for your son Jesus that died on the cross for me so I can overcome the world and the world does not overcome me. Thank you. And this morning we come as a congregation, we come together as brothers and sisters to say, here is our hearts. Take our hearts. Heal our hearts. Mold our hearts. We lift up people who are struggling with mental health, oh God. We know that you love them and you see them. We lift up the people who are struggling financially, people who are grieving, people who are wondering, where is God? Oh Lord, this morning we ask that you reveal yourself to us. If nothing else, we want to see you. If nothing else, we want to hear you. Through the sermon, through the music, whatever you do this morning, oh God, we want to be part of it. We come as we are, but we refuse to leave as we came. We come as we are, but we refuse to leave with the same state we came in. We want more of you. We receive more of you. May you anoint the preacher this morning. May you anoint our singer, musician. May you anoint our ushers. May you anoint our tech people in the back. May you anoint those who are watching online. Oh God, may you anoint us this morning. More of you. Here's our heart. Have your way this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. I remember when, I remember, I remember when he saved my life. Everything before that was a blur. I was wild, living foul. It just wasn't right. I remember when, I remember, I remember when he changed my name from sick to healed, from broke to blessed. Now I can testify that I'll never be the same.
Come on, let your church say amen. How many know God is amazing? I mean, truly amazing. Has God done any amazing things in your life? Can you say that my God is amazing? My God. My God is amazing. Come on, let's give him praise. My God is amazing. Simply amazing. A powerful God, a wonderful witness, a glorious God. Come on, my God is what? Amazing. Come on, church. Let's worship him, let's honor him, let's glorify his holy and magnificent name. This is the day the Lord has made. This is the day the Lord has made. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 To God be the glory, great things God has done. As you take your seat, I want you to smile at the person to your right or to your left with your smile, with your mask on. Let them know that God is amazing. Can you say he's amazing? Matter of fact, say, look at me. That's a proof to say that God is amazing. To God be glorified on this marvelous day. Welcome to our 9 o'clock worship service. Thank you so much for being in the house of the Lord. To those online, thank you again for being here. Dr. Nella, thank you, and welcome home. Amen. She has traveled around the world, and she's brought gifts. She's brought gifts to bear. I mean, it feels like on Christmas Day. Amen. And we're excited. She's going to come and share and explain what these gifts are. We want to welcome all who are in our service today on this third Sunday of July. Believe it or not, we are almost going closer and closer to Christmas than we were last week. Amen? Amen. Yeah, I'm going to put it out there in the atmosphere so that you will know when it gets to be 95 degrees today that your pastor said it's getting close to Christmas time. Amen. That will keep you cool for a little bit. But at this time, at this time, I'm welcome Dr. Nello back. She's going to share with you some of what uh, her last couple of weeks have been like, and then we will welcome our guests, acknowledge those who are visiting, and we're going to have a special, special invitation to prayer uh, for our offering this Sunday morning. Amen? Come on, put your hands together as we welcome Dr. Nello back as she share a little bit today. Hey, church. It is, it is good to be back home. I miss y'all. Um, so I had a wonderful trip, and uh, I want to show you real quick if we can find it. Um, the wedding went well. Uh, I am tired. There was a lot of uh, festivities going on, and um, I didn't realize um, how much... Uh, you have to plan and plan and plan to welcome people. Um, but the traditional wedding, the way it works is we are supposed to be hosting our in-laws. And then the religious uh, wedding and then the reception will take place in September. Then the other side of their family will be the one hosting us. So I'm glad I'm not going to be hosting nobody. Um, so I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for that. And uh, the gift I brought here, I brought them for the church because I couldn't bring something for each one of you individually um, uh, because I'm not bowling like that. <laughs> yet, yet, amen? Yet. Yet. But I did bring uh, coffee for my colleagues in the office, not for the church, the office. I'm just kidding. Um, but um, I just want you to know that I, I felt your prayers. The trip was long, but it was good to, to be with 
family, so I want to thank you. Thank you for giving me the time to go be with my parents and my siblings that I've not seen in a long time. Um, I know some of you don't understand how it is difficult. Um, you know, I was away from my parents when I was 15 years old. And that's the, the, the age where you need your parents the most. And as I'm getting older, I'm realizing the wisdom and the more I need my, the elders now more than ever. Um, my parents were so happy to see me. My mom was suffocating me with hugs and kisses. Um, but I would just want to thank you, church, for giving me the grace, the patience, and the kindness to travel 22 hours to be with them. Amen. Amen. And then for those who are wondering what these baskets are, so these baskets are called uh, igiseke. Igiseke are made out of wood. Uh, yeah, wood. And then they have a way, specific way that they make it. And I bought them from uh, local single mothers, you know, to support small businesses. Amen. And what they use this basket for there is they use them for offering and tithing in churches. Yeah. Uh, and then they also use them whenever um, you go visit someone and you have to bring them gift of rice or beans or coffee. So you have to cover it. But to wrap it nicely, traditionally, these are the baskets that were used. So I hope that the church can use them however you would like. Um, I'm just thankful that I could bring something to show my gratitude and my love to you. <laughs> Amen. And then though we, would, we may not be able to show the slide today, I hope that um, you will come next Sunday and then you get to see them uh, so you can see what we were wearing. And also, I did dance. I don't dance in public, but I did dance. Yeah, you know I don't dance in public when my sister was like, wow. So um, it was horrible because I don't know how to dance by traditional dance. I was learning, um, but I just wanted to make her happy. So, And then another quick announcement. I don't know if you were an announcement, but an important announcement. Uh, hmm? Yes, all right. Then, uh, the another announcement I wanted to make while we're in this is um, that... Um, on Friday, there will be a middle and high school uh, event here at the church in the auditorium. It will be a game and movie night from 5.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, it will be free. It will be free. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm not charging yet. I'm just kidding. Um, so all middle school and high schoolers, if you know them, if you're grandparents and you have, uh, you know, nephews or nieces and this, you know, please um, RSVP by um, the 19th to let us know. So we appreciate that. So I needed to make sure that you knew this. And then uh, I will let the pastor do the rest. Thank you. Come on, let the church say amen. What a joy it is to connect. And as I said a couple of uh, Sundays ago, is that because Dr. Nella was uh, on the continent of Africa and she was texting back, watching the service, not only were you seen here in the States, but you were seen around the world. So thank you for being the evangelist uh, and the C.N. Jenkins outreach in a marvelous, marvelous way. Want to say welcome again to all of those who are visiting, worshiping for the first time. Members, if you have persons you want to introduce at this time, let us know where they're from. Give a major shout out. Any guests here today, we want to say welcome. This is your time. Any members you want to identify some persons, we want to let you know that you are in the right place at the right time. Can you help me thank God also for the mission team? Put your hands together for that. An outstanding carnival yesterday, Deacon Sharon. Deacon Kim and all of those from the mission team, thank you for doing a great job to help C. and Jenkins reach the community in a special way. Um, at this time, as we go to God in prayer, I want to give a prayer in the terms of a poem. Brother Tim, Brother Tim Blue, if you're coming out this time, we had a great conversation yesterday 
Uh, you never know how God places somebody in your space and in your heart. And so we're standing in the grocery store, and of course, you know, if you ask me to pray for you, wherever I am, I'm going to drop and pray. But Brother Tim prayed for me, so I'm going to ask him to share this poem as a part of our prayer of our offering to God, okay? Uh, all right. Uh, the name of the poem is called uh, Heaven's... The name of the poem is called uh, Heaven's Grocery Store. And it goes, and it reminds me of uh, places like this where I go to get fed. Uh, thank you, uh, Tanner. Uh, I was walking down our, uh, life's lonesome highway a little while ago, you know, and I seen this old sign that read this store. And the name of the store was called Heaven's Grocery Store. So I got a little bit close up on the door and it came open wide. And I come to myself, I was standing up inside. And there was a host of angels just standing everywhere. And then one angel said to me, my friend, shop with care. You see, everything a Christian needed was in this store. And what you couldn't carry, well, you could possibly go back the next day for more. So first I got a little bit of love. And then patience was in the same row. And a little further down was understanding, for you need that wherever you go. And I got a box or two of wisdom and a bag or two of faith. And you couldn't miss the spiritual awakenings, for they were all over the place. So I headed for the counter to pay my old grocery bill, for I thought I had everything to do my master's will. Just then, I seen a couple of prayers just hanging, for I knew I better get one or two of those in. For if I ever go outside the door again, I might run right smack dab in the sin. Peace and joy were plentiful. They were on the last shelf. And good songs and tambourines and stuff was hanging, so I thought maybe I ought to just uh, help myself. And I didn't forget the old salvation, for that was free. So I thought, maybe I'll get enough of that to save you and me. So I, so I headed for the counter, and I asked the angel, how much do I owe? How much do I owe? And the angel said, my good friend, Mr. Uh, take him wherever you go. So I asked again, how much do I really owe? And the angel said, your God, Jesus, died and paid your bill for all the beautiful, blessed things about 2,000 years ago. Come on, let's give God thanks for the prayer. Amen. To God be the glory. Great things God has done. Let us now present our gifts and tithes to the Lord on this day. Amen.
my strength whenever I am weak. My thoughts and everything I need, he's more than life to me. Jesus is my peace and shelter from the storm. He's all my heart. Come on, let us stand and give God thanks and praise because he is the mighty one, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and the great I am. Please join us as we pray. God, we thank you for because you are all those and a whole lot more. We honor you this worship day. God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, but most important, what our hearts have felt. Thank you, God, that the Holy Spirit is in this space. And thank you, God, is ministering to us in just the way we need it. God, we pray that you continue to be the potter and we will be the willing clay. Today on this Sabbath morning, God, we pray that you would indeed shape us and mold us into the instruments of your peace. God, for the person in front of us who came looking for a blessing, I pray that not only will they find it, to God, they will share it. Somebody else, God, came because they know if it had not been for you in their life, they wouldn't be here. So they could not count it robbery for being in your house today. God, somebody's watching online. Somebody's listening by the way of the phone, God, and we pray that you administer to them in a special way. God, we know it's not our will, but let thy will be done. We pray, God, this prayer in the name of Jesus, our Savior, that all of God's children say amen. amen. Say amen again. Come on, let's give God a standing ovation for who God is, what God does, and how God moves in our lives. Amen, amen. If you could please remain standing in the sanctuary and in your homes or wherever you may be listening or watching to this service, we stand to honor God by the reading of the word, knowing that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
Today, today we go to Paul's letter to the church at Corinth, the first of his letters to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We'll be reading verses 12 through 20, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 through 20, and we want to read this word together and collectively on this Sabbath day. Let us now read God's word. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Food is for the stomach, and the stomach is for food. But God will do away with both of them. Yet the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. And now God has not only raised the Lord, but will also raise us up through his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take away the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? May it never be. Or do you not know that the one who joins himself to a harlot is one body with her. For he says, the two will become one flesh. But the one who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee immorality. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body. But immoral man sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. My friends, this is the word of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Holy Spirit and in this space as we continue to worship and praise God on this glorious day. Will you help me just give God a hand clap of praise for our choir today? <laughs> Brothers, <laughs> Dr. Monroe and musicians, thank you again for, for preparing us for that moment of worship in song. I call your attention to verse uh, 20 of this pericope, for it is where we will camp out and preach and teach on this last part of a series of sermons, which we call in making it count. But verse 20 says, for you have been brought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. Will you read that with me, please? For you have been bought with a price, Therefore, glorify God in your body. Come on, say it one more time. For you have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Amen. You may be seated, giving God thanks and praise for who God is, what God does, and how God moves in our lives. And today, again, as I've alluded to, we conclude this series of sermons to which we've been preaching the last three weeks. But today's sermon is simply entitled, The Benefits of Good Health, Get It Under Control. The Benefits of Good Health, Get It Under Control. My friends, on January the 18th, 2018, some four and a half years ago, Chad Bacchus uh, wrote an article entitled, Life Lessons on Getting Things in Order. And he opened up the thought process by saying, somewhere along the way, human beings have acquired a put things off gene into their system. Let me say it this way. Chad said, for uh, there along the way, human beings have acquired this gene in their DNA, and, and we've learned to wait and have, for the most part, y'all, arrange our lives to put things off that should be done right now. And we put them off to the last minute. Say, Lord, have mercy. 
Ch Chad said, y'all, that because of the put things off gene, we not only use this as an excuse, but for some of us, it is the first line of defense when it comes to taking actions or making decisions in places, my friends, that require some kind of activity. Uh, Y'all, uh, please hear me with compassion because I somehow agree with Chad when Chad says that we put things off. Or if the truth be told, we go through seasons of life, some of us that is, not being our best, displaying not what we can become because we have simply put things off until sometimes later. For some of us, not you, but the person beside you, so some of us have put off making important decisions until later. Some of us, y'all, uh, have put off having tough conversations until it is moved from a serious to a critical situation. Some of us, y'all, we, we have put off, uh, uh, shall we say, changing habits until we can't bear it any longer. Some of us have, have put off letting some folk go until they got on your last nerve. Now you can't stand to see them horseback riding or walking. Some of us, y'all, have, have put off paying people back, and then we put it off so long, now we getting the lawyers and the banks are coming after us because we just put it off until the last minute. Ch Chad Bacchus, y'all, he, he wrote this article uh, some four and a half years ago, but if the truth be told, some of y'all think he wrote it this morning. Somebody say amen. amen. For, 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 you see, the truth is we have this put off genes into our DNA so badly, y'all, uh, that we wait, some of us in school, wait to the last minute to cram for an exam. Some of us, y'all, we wait and squeeze out the last drop of gas before we go fill up the tank again. And, and, and in the words of comedian J. Anthony Brown, watch out there now, uh, some of us have put off our health until the very last moment. Let me see if I can help you understand this. We have put off taking care of our bodies, not because we are hard-hearted, but truthfully, y'all, because we fail to recognize that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, our body is a house where God wants to reside, and, and our body, y'all, has been bought with a price we could never repay. Let me see if I can say it again. Be because of the put off gene, say the put off gene. Because of the put off gene, y'all, we delay important conversations. Because of the put off gene, we keep folk around longer than they need to stay around. Because of the put off gene, we keep on doing and performing habits that we should let go of. And because of the put off gene, we deny our health and neglect the ultimate care that we ought to give to our bodies. Why? Because I believe we fail to recognize that our body is a temple of Almighty God. Our body is a house of the Holy Spirit, and our body has been bought with a price that we can never repay. Uh, Y'all didn't get it, so let me say it like this. I said our body, the body that David said is fearfully and wonderfully made. Our body, the body that Psalms 139 says, your workmanship is marvelous and how well I know it. Our body, the body that Proverbs 17 says, a cheerful heart is good medicine. Our body, the body where the Bible says gracious words are a honeycomb sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Our body, the body that Paul says that do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit in whom will you have from God and that you are not your own for you have been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God with your bodies. Church, hear what I'm saying because we neglect our body and we fall you y'all, we fail to honor God with our bodies because we don't hold fast to the scripture that says our body is a temple of the Lord. 
my friends, our body, the body that we, we have, this body is to glorify Almighty God. It is that body that we are to thank God for. It is that body, my friends, that wakes up and makes up and stands up and gets up and says, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. You see, it is your body made from the Creator. It is your body that God creates. It's your body that God has made dark skin and light skin and almond and vanilla. Your body that God puts braids on and gives it blonde hair. Your body where God puts a weave in it, makes it brunette. It's your body that's thin and sometimes pleasingly plump. Your body that's authentic and sometimes unique. Your body that's cosmopolitan and chic, that's rural and urban. Your body that's dipped in chocolate and bronze in elegance and enamel with grace and toasted with beauty and embroiled with riches and showered with intelligence and baptized with understanding and anointed with love and tanned with copper and dusted with powder and sprinkled in light and robe and radiance. It's your body that's a contributor in your body that's a supporter in your body, that's a sponsor in your body, that's a patron in your body that goes to middle school and high school and college and basic training. It's your body that gives you mother wit in your body, that gives you common sense in your body, that is young in your body, that is old in your body, where your hair is silver in your body, where your wisdom is gold in your body, that makes you God's child in your body, that's a product of life in your body, that's a message of hope in your body that's omnipotent power in your body that's delivered omniscient grace in your body that's special and great in your body that's in church right now God has made you a body and you can say I am somebody I'm made in God's image I am somebody I'm made with God's grace I am somebody I may not be what you want me to be but by God's power I am somebody and with this body I'm going to praise the Lord. With this body, I'm going to give him thanks. With this body, I'm going to shout hallelujah. With this body, I'm going to wave my hands in the air and wave them like I just don't care. With this body, you might not like it, but I'm glad God made me in God's own image. And when I look in the mirror, I see a little bit of God. When I comb my hair, I comb a little bit of God's. When I wash my face, I wash a little bit of God. Because that's how God loves me so much that he gave me a body. You see, it's this body, this body that, 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 that Paul reminds us that we have been bought with a price. Bought with a price of the precious blood of Jesus. Y'all, in the obvious question is, how can we do less than to honor God with our bodies? See, a God-glorifying life, if we belong to Christ, we should serve Christ faithfully and consistently. Not just in our thought process, not just merely with our feelings, y'all, but with our hands and with our feet, with our eyes, with our ears, with our tongues. Everything that we have should be done to the glory of Almighty God. What we watch should be done to the glory of Almighty God. Where we go should be done to the glory of Almighty God. What we listen to should be done to the all glory of Almighty God. All these things, say all these things. All these things should be done to God's glory. You see, this was the challenge, Pastor Bruce, in the first century Corinth church because the people really thought that they could think or say anything about their bodies. And Paul says, I want to write and correct some stinking thinking. Paul says, I want to write and lift up some knowledge into some folk to let them know is that your body has been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. There's a misconception, y'all. And in this short passage, these there, there are four things that I believe that we learn strictly from the text about our bodies and how they become a temple of the Lord. First of all, know that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
Therefore, using our bodies is an act of sin or immorality, y'all, that desecrates our temple. Let me say that again. The fact speaks of volumes all by itself that your body is a temple and a place where the Holy Spirit wants to dwell. And anytime you you go into immorality and conduct sin, you desecrate, shall we say, you disqualify that temple where God wants to live. Therefore, you see, you got to be careful that you don't disqualify yourself, even though you think you are all that and then some. But if you don't have a good place for the spirit to dwell, it just desecrates and disqualifies the place where God wants to stay. Okay, you didn't get it. Let me see if I can teach it to you. You see, many times people have achieved and they have gotten awards and even championships, but because of some illegality or or irregularity, uh, y'all, they had to forfeit their championship. Okay, you didn't get it. Is that not what happened to the Howard University soccer team in 1971? For They had to forfeit their championship because they had an ineligible player. Is that not what happened to the San Francisco men's soccer team in 1978? They had to forfeit you know, their championship because of illegalities. The Tulsa's women's golf team in 1988 had to forfeit their championship because they assigned some ineligible players to play the Syracuse men's lacrosse soccer, the lacrosse team. They had to forfeit Dr. Nell their championship, not because of an ineligible player, but the, the, but the coach's wife had co-signed for a car for a player, and that's against NCAA rules, Miss Lisa, and they had to forfeit their championship. That happened, y'all, with the UCLA women's softball team. It happened with the Florida State uh, uh, track team, y'all, that happened with the LSU women's softball team. And in in 2013, the Louisville Cardinals had to give up their championship basketball trophy, y'all, not because of ineligible players, but what was happening to recruit new players, they were giving young girls to go do sexual acts with the ball players, and because it was found out and the coaches didn't do anything, they had to forfeit the champion. You're not getting that. It's not what happened on the field. It's what happened when people were not looking. They got them in trouble. Can I come get you this Sunday morning? You see, your testimony is not really going to be tripped up when you come to church because you got your hallelujah, thank you, Jesus face on. Your testimony would not be called into question when you are reading the Bible and in Bible study because that's what you're supposed to do. But your testimony might be questioned when you're in the grocery store. Your testimony might be question when you're cussing out the waitress. Your testimony might be questioned when you're stealing from somebody else that you know that you said your testimony might be questioned when you start creeping. Your testimony might be questioned, y'all, not when people are watching, but when they are not watching. And the Bible says that you have to be careful with your body, that your body does not dis- come, 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 desecrate of the space where the Holy Spirit wants to dwell. See, sometimes you got to have some moral integrity about yourself. Sometimes you got to have some no in your spirit. Matter of fact, no is a complete sentence. Let's practice that sentence right now. At the count of three, let's just give one word sentence. It's called no. One, two, three. Okay, I think you got it right there. No is a period. Does not need explanation. Does not need exemplification. Does not need illustration. No is a complete sentence. You got to say no to the devil and no to temptations and no to opportunities that you know will not bring you closer to Almighty God. Let me see if I can flip it for you because sometimes it's not only are things taken away from you, but sometimes you have to take things away that you know are not right. Is that not what happened, y'all, with the Oakwood Adventist Academy in Huntsville, Alabama? Dr. Monroe, Oakwood Academy is in Huntsville. It is the high school that leads up to Oakwood University of the Seventh-day Adventist in Huntsville, Alabama. And y'all, they forfeited a championship game this 
past spring because the game, y'all, was scheduled for 8 p.m. and the Sabbath, y'all, started at 7.30 p.m. Okay, you didn't get it. High school students says we will not play because our Sabbath starts at 7.30 and the game is scheduled for 8 o'clock. So we will forfeit the championship because we have more love for God than we have for a game, okay? You see how important that is, Brother Kaysan, that, that young boys, I'm talking about the ones that we are afraid of, the ones with the hand, with the bag, baggy pants, the ones that we say, oh, they're just going to hell in a handbasket. These young basketball players say we will not go against what the Spirit of God puts inside of us and desecrate ourselves and not play on a Sabbath day. They forfeited the game. Now, they did not win the championship, but they get illustrated in this sermon and many other sermons because they had the right to stand up. Is there anybody in here who can say, Reverend, I have forfeited some things. I have turned away from some things. I have stopped some things. I have gone into some places. I stopped going into places. I stopped thinking and I stopped watching because I did not want to desecrate the temple that God calls me to live in. You see, the second thing that God gives us, y'all, in this text is that God owns our body. That's what verse 19 says. Because our entire being was made for him, God has the right to dictate how we are to use our bodies. See, y'all, Satan wants us to think that this is my body. Satan wants us to think that we are in charge. Satan wants us to think that we can do whatever we want to do with our bodies. And I say without hesitation, the devil is a lie. Uh, you got to stop listening to the devil telling you that it's your thing. Do what you want to do. I can't tell you who to. I told y'all need to pray. Amen. I didn't give the whole song. Y'all finish it just like that. Amen. You, you see, the, the word that we have to hold on to, y'all, is that God owns our bodies. And, and we must be humble in coming to God because God owns our bodies. Paul wrote in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, he says, All things have been created through him and for him. And because our entire being was made for him, he has the right to dictate how we are to use our body. You see, in essence, God is the owner and we are the borrower or God is the lender y'all and, and we are the owner and we are the lender. Now if you've ever bought anything that required a deed or ever bought anything that required a title you do know you have to have some insurance until you pay it off. Why? Not because they don't think it's going to last but the one who are lending you the money to pay for the thing you want make sure that they get paid before you you die. Okay. All right. Any homeowners in here? Anybody still got a mortgage in here? All right. Now, now keep your hands up, mortgage people. Keep your hands up. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you got some homeowners insurance, not for your homeowner association, but you got it so the bank can get their money back. Somebody say amen. Okay, okay, here is how it works with Almighty God. God loves you so much that God has an insurance policy for you, a life insurance policy, a life eternal insurance policy, that God says that I'm going to love you so much that I'm going to give my only son, Jesus Christ, to co-sign for your behalf. He says he's going to co-sign. You don't have to sign anything, but he's going to die on the cross, shed his blood, sign his name in red blood so that you will have a bona fide life insurance policy so when you take your last breath God says boom paid in full okay you didn't get it the good news y'all is that the owner the owner dictates how we live our lives Therefore, we got to honor God with our bodies. Okay, let me move quickly because you, you didn't get that one, so I hope you get this one. The third thing we learned is that we have been purchased by Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 20, the price he paid saved us with his blood shed for us on the cross. The price that he paid for us saved us by the blood of Jesus Christ. The price he paid, an act of redemption 
redemption, y'all. God has restored the spirit of God inside of us through the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's a process. Can you shout process? A process of redemption and transformation. A process of changing from the old to the new. A process of metanoia, the Greek word, Brother Jerome, that says, I'm not doing a 360, but a 180. I do the 180 and go a different way, a process, so that I don't stay on the same highway, but I take the right exit ramp and go a different way, a process that I don't keep mixing the same mix to make the same stupid cake, but I put some different ingredients, so now my cake is sweet. Okay, a process that I will be able to think differently and speak differently and act differently because I'm in process. Can you say process? See, a process, y'all, it takes time, and many of us miss the joy because we're worried about the objective, then we forget the process. Process, process. Let me see if I can illustrate this to you. I don't know if anybody in here uh, follows baseball, but being a product of North Carolina, growing up in the area, Dr. Monroe, the only team close enough for us to follow back in the day, y'all, was none other than who? The Atlanta Braves, Atlanta Braves. So we followed the Atlanta Braves, and, and this was before they became America's team because we got them on Channel 17 because that's what Ted Turner did. He gave us the Atlanta Braves. And the Braves, y'all, they were so bad. Sometimes you look at the Braves' score, it was like a football score. You know, it was like the Braves had two and the Dodgers had 28. It was just that bad. You know, the Braves were that. But you see, because the Braves was the only team to which we could watch, the Braves became our team. I'm an Atlanta Braves. Braves fan. Yes, I am. I watch it, y'all, not because I'm rooting because I want to see them win. I just watch it out of loyalty. And y'all know what happened last year. The Atlanta Braves, Brother Jason, not the Philadelphia Phillies, but the Atlanta Braves won the World Series. They won the World Series, y'all. The World Series. But get this, y'all, in August of last year, the Atlanta Braves were less than 500. Okay, that means the Atlanta Braves had lost more games than they had won in August. You didn't get it. The Atlanta Braves, they won the World Series, but they lost more games in August than they had won. But I told you in October they had won the World Series. How did they become the champions? Here's what the Braves said. They won the World Series, y'all, in six games. At the end of the sixth game, they were saying, we are so excited because nobody else believed in us. We believed in ourselves. We are so excited to be here because in August we had a losing record, but in October we are the champions. Okay, you didn't get it. In August, nobody believed in us because we had more liability than we had assets. In August, nobody believed in us. We had bad pitching and bad hitting. In August, nobody believed in us because the record says you've lost more games than you won. What was the probability of you winning the World Series? It was like 500 to 1. You could not do that. The Bible says is that all things are possible to those that believe. You see, I don't know where you are. It's July right now. But we don't know what's going to happen in your October. We don't know what's going to happen in your November. We don't know what's going to happen when you are 90 days clean and sober, when you're 120 days clean and sober, when you're 225 days clean and sober. We don't know what's going to happen then. But right now, I may be losing, but by the power of Almighty God, I'm going through a process. By the power of Almighty God, I'm going going through a transformation by the power of Almighty God. God is making my tomorrow better than my day. Is there anybody in the house who can give God thanks right now for a process, a process that God gives, and a process that God makes, and a process that God delivers, and a process that's paid by the power of Almighty God? It's, it's a process. Can you say process? Here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. You do, do, do not discount the, the, the process because you are so focused on the objective. The process, the process, the process. The Bible says that you were paid with a price. 
pay with the price. Let me see if I can illustrate it this way. I don't know if you remember what happened in 1997, so let me give you some facts. In 1997, y'all, the Green Bay Packers won the, won the NFL uh, championship, and the, and, the, and the Florida Martins, they won the World Series. In 1997, y'all, J.K. Rowland uh, wrote that first Harry Potter book, and it became a world-renowned seller. In 1997, Tiger Woods became became the youngest player to ever win the Masters. In 1997, Princess of Wales, Diana, was killed tragically in a car wreck. In 1997, y'all, check this out. Chicken was a dollar and five cents a pound. A gallon of milk was a dollar and 90 cents. And a loaf of bread was a dollar and 17 cents. Somebody say, have mercy. Say, take me back to 97, right? But also in 1997, y'all, there was something that, that was burned on the hard drive of my mind, y'all, as I watched TV, and it was commercial, y'all, and the commercial had this tag. It says, there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. This is what happened in 1997. MasterCard was, was fighting against American Express and Diners Club, y'all, and Visa and, and, and Discovery Card. MasterCard was at the bottom. So they got together the ad agencies and they said, we need to come with a slogan, with a hook. And, and y'all, the president of MasterCard at that time did not approve this. Matter of fact, he was fired before this came up to be. And the ad agency said, we got a hook for you and that is is that there are some things money can't buy for everything else there is mastercard but now the other part y'all that you don't want to admit is the word priceless you see, the word priceless was what was put in front of us on the screen because if you remember the first commercial, a daddy took his son to a baseball game and they put up a sign, hot dogs, uh, $15. They put up a sign, jerseys, $30. Put up a sign, a, a, a foam finger, that was like $12. They had all these prices that were really over and above, but at the end, they said there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there is MasterCard. And it's what? Priceless. You got, got, you got to get that, y'all. They, they were saying is that there are some things that, 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 that you can pay for, but, but you cannot pay for the experience. You cannot pay for the joy. You cannot pay for the memory because there are some things that will happen in your life that are priceless. There are some things that will come along your way that are priceless. When God delivered you from an addictive behavior, that was priceless. When God picked you up from being down, that was priceless. When God turned you around from a life of defeat, that was priceless. When God saved you from living in domestic violence, that was priceless. When God brought you somebody in your life significant, that was priceless. When God says, I got you through this, that was priceless. When God helped you walk across the stage, not with a cum laude, not with a summa cum laude, but an old thank you laude, that was anybody here got some priceless moments in your life. God came through in the nick of time, and that was priceless. God woke you up in the nick of time, that was priceless. God stopped that car from running the intersection, and that was priceless. God helped you do what you can only do in the power of God, that was priceless. Do I have just four witnesses in the house who will give God some praise today for all the things that God does in your life, all the places God take you in your life? I want you to give Give God a shout and say, God, I thank you. I can never repay you. God, I praise you. I can never do it by myself. God, I know it's your power and your glory. And for that, it's priceless. It's priceless for the love of Jesus Christ. It's priceless for the power of the Holy Spirit. It's priceless. Will you give God thanks right there that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus says, I come to the world, not to condemn the world, but to save the world. And for that, it's priceless. It's priceless that I'm alive.
God. It's priceless that I have blood running warm in my body. It's priceless that my mouth still works. It's priceless that my eyes work. It's priceless that my hearing, well, all the things I've been through, all the things you've been through, all the places you should have got locked up for, but you're here alive today, is priceless. 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 Here, here. I, I, I got to give you this. I got to give you this. Got to give you this because I don't want you to leave without it. The fourth thing the Bible gives us, it says God created our bodies for a purpose, to bring God glory and honor in him. God created our bodies for a purpose, to bring God glory and honor to him. Y'all, we have only one body for which we are to serve and honor God. And we need to do with that body and give it back to God because God has given us a life that is priceless. Okay, let me move quickly. A.V., A.V., work with me because I'm skipping those last slides. I got to go. Got to go to Viola, Viola Davis. Viola Davis has a book out this summer that I'm reading as a part of my, my summer read called Finding Me. Amen. Now, don't hate. Just appreciate. Amen. And those of you, it's not PG-13. It's Viola Davis. Amen. All right. This is not Michelle Obama. This is Viola Davis. Amen. Now, now, in her book, Finding Me, she really talks about what it means to find herself. Viola Davis, if you don't know who she is, she is that star from How to Get Away with murder. Viola Davis, she is the one who got nominated for an Oscar for the movie Help, but won an Oscar for the movie Fences. Viola Davis, y'all, from St. Matthew, South Carolina, born on a plantation, y'all, but moved to central Rhode Island, went to Rhode Island College and went over to Juilliard, Dr. O, and performed so well that she got awards on top of awards for being on the Broadway stage. Viola Davis, y'all, in this book, Finding Me, really talks about how to get out of abuse, how to get out of constraining situations, how to free up your mind and being then free for you. So that's why I'm reading the book, y'all, and I suggest that you read something this summer that's going to inspire you as well. By Viola Davis and Finding Me, y'all, she she, is, she she gives a quote in talking about the eight-year-old self that she turned out from. You see, at eight years old, she used to run home ahead of the little boys in her class, y'all, because Viola, she was she was called dark and she was called ugly. She was called the N-word. She was called nappy head. And she had to run for her life because these boys, y'all, they would take rocks and stones or bricks or sticks or whatever they could to throw at her. She had to run for her life. And Viola said that that was a turning point in her life, being chased by demons, being in a house of abuse, being with a father who was an alcoholic and abusive to her mother. Viola tells her story, y'all, and at eight years old, she had a turning point, and at eight years old, she started to run. Now, in the book, not to give it away, she says that she found out that the eight-year-old girl that she was then had never been told, you are worthy, you are beautiful, but now this eight-year-old girl suddenly found herself as a leading lady. I told you, she won an Oscar. She won a Tony, y'all. Viola Davis says she's a leading lady and a mouthpiece for all the women who looked like her. All the women that Viola looked like at eight years old. She says that now I am that woman. That's why people stand. That's why they cheer. That's why they applaud. She says not because of what I look, but what I've been through. And I got to drop my kickstand right there because somebody's in church right now and people call you names. They said you wouldn't make it. They talked about your mama and your daddy. They talked about big mama and big daddy. Said you come from trash. Say you would never accomplish anything. And like Viola, as an eight-year-old, you start running. Like Viola, as a little child, you said, I cannot stay where I am. And y'all, the good news is that when you recognize your body is to be done to glorify God, when you recognize that God makes your body. And he says, in my body, 
I would give God glory. That's why at eight years old, she says, now black women and white women, that's why Latino and Native American women can look at me as somebody who ran from abuse, but they can see that I'm not running from abuse, but I'm running to glorify Almighty God. You missed your shout right there, because Viola Davis, if you don't remember nothing else, she goes from an eight-year-old to that Academy Award-nominated winner from the book, the, from the movie, The Help. But what did she say? You is smart, you is kind, and you is what? Important. Okay, you missed your shout right there. She says, I didn't get that when I was eight years old, but as a grown woman, I can say to somebody else, you is smart, you is kind, and you is important. And I know that's not good English, but you do get what I'm saying. You is smart, you is kind, and you is important. So regardless of what people may say about your body, yeah, you got some rolls here. Yeah, you got some extra pounds there. Yeah, you got some stuff that already dropped right there. But thanks be to God, you still smart. You still kind. You still important. Yeah, you might not be able to speak like everybody, everybody else. Yeah, you might not have as much money as somebody else, but you still is smart. You is kind, and you is important. Yeah, they said you would never get off of drugs, but right now I'm clean and sober today because you is smart. You is kind, and you is important. Yeah, they said you wouldn't have any children. Say your womb was locked up. Now you got so many grandchildren, you got babies, kids coming to your house for Thanksgiving dinner because you is smart, you is kind, and you is important. What you saying, Reverend? With your body, you got to honor God. With your body, you got to worship God. With your body, you got to praise God because God has been so good and so wonderful and so powerful. How about help me give God a 10-second praise right now for all that God does, for all that God has been, for everywhere God takes us. Give God the glory. Give God the honor. Give God the praise. What a mighty God we serve. What a glorious God we serve. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Here's how we leave. Here's how we leave. We don't want to hold you too long, but we do want you to know that you are here because God wants you to honor God with your body. Now, I invite you, I invite you, I invite you to go back and read this text because it is full, it is, it is a chock full of nuts, amen. But I want you to know that it's your body, your physical body that God wants to work on today. It's your mental body, it's your spiritual body. That God says, I'm going to do a new thing in right now. Some of our bodies, some of our bodies are not in a position to really be used right now because we have used and abused our body. So I want to pray. I want to pray for those persons who say, I want a difference of how I use my body. Deacons, elders, I invite you to come now as we always do. We want to pray. I, somebody's here today that says, I need some help, Reverend, making decisions over my body. Sometimes we think it's somebody else, but it's the people who come to church sometimes who need some help with their bodies. Somebody says, I, my body has been abused, or I'm abusing my body, so I need some help. Praise God. Here's somebody coming down. But God is saying, I, I need to speak to somebody about, about the misuse of your body. Nobody's beating, nobody's cutting. But you're not using your time right. You spend more time trying to solve Wordle than you do studying the Word. Come on, say amen. You spend more time on TikTok than you spend in the Word. More time on Facebook, as they say, than your face in the book. Now, I'm not using these cliches. I'm really speaking to somebody today because it's your body. God has given us a body, y'all, to be used for God's glory. And I want us to really think about how do we use, how do we, how do we change how we treat our bodies. Some of our bodies need some rest. Amen. You work in 24-7, and God can't use a tired body. Amen. Some of our bodies right now need to, need to reconnect because we haven't gotten as close to the God as we should. So we need you to reconnect. Pray with me. Lord God, we stand today as humble as we know how, and we pray, God, that you will speak to us, 
in a way to our bodies. For God, our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And we pray now that you will use this temple. God, help us not to abuse. Help us, God, not to go lacking. God, help us, God, to, to reevaluate. God, we confess that we've let stuff come into our bodies that was not of you. God, some of us confess we've hooked up with somebody else's body. And the word says that was sin. God, somebody else can, can say, God, I'm sorry for not giving my body the proper nutrition and the proper amount of water. And, and so whatever it is that we go through in our mind that we have not taken care of our bodies, God, we pray this Sunday that we're going to make it count. This Sunday, God, we pray that you would speak into the bodies of those around us. God, may we be supportive and not condemning. God, when we see somebody slip up, may we not be like those boys who threw rocks at Viola, God, but may we be somebody who encourages. God, we pray that somebody who may be feeling bad about their body, bad about how they look, they don't look like a model, they don't look like a TV actor. God, help them realize they are made in your image. It is not what they look like to other folk. It's who they are in your eyes. So, God, speak now in a mighty way. Revive us, God. Renew us. Help us know that our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And, God, when the Holy Spirit comes into us, God, let it find a place called home. God, let the Holy Spirit have its way in our living room, in our dining room, in our bedroom. Let the Holy Spirit have its way, God, on the phone. As we text, as we tweet, God, let the Holy Spirit have a way that we will never leave nor, nor, nor forsake that spirit. Thank you, God, for those who make a commitment today, who give their life to you. And we pray, God, that this space, this place called ministry of C.N. Jenkins will continue to be a body of Christ. We pray this prayer, God, now asking your blessed benedictions as we leave, God, the sanctuaries and leave these holy grounds. May we never leave your presence. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, give us your blessings, we pray in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Put your hands together. Give God a hand clap of praise. We love you. We honor God. We praise God for you. Y'all have a fantastic week in the name of our Lord. Amen.